Years back, a customer of one of my courses told me that he planned to judge the course based on how counterintuitive the advice was. Now, from a theory of information, this is actually a reasonable strategy. Information, in this sense, is a measure of surprise. You don't learn much when someone tells you something you already know. In contrast, ideas that totally change how you think about something are more valuable. However, from an advice-taking perspective, I think this person was misguided. Not only is good advice typically obvious, but a lot of counterintuitive advice is actually pretty bad. Somewhat surprisingly, even if the advice is obvious, it's still useful to hear it. Everything is obvious. One of my favorite books is Duncan Watts's Everything is Obvious Once You Know the Answer. When serious social science researchers spend years investigating a question, the lay public often receives the results with a pronouncement of, well, duh. Watts argues that this is a psychological illusion. We judge obviousness not by the information and whether it's strictly new, but if it violates our intuitions. Unfortunately, our intuitions are often fuzzy, which makes many scenarios seem plausible. When investigators painstakingly look at a question and find an obvious answer, it may seem like a waste of time. Except, very often, the opposite conclusion was also plausible. In other words, we actually have learned something from an information theoretic perspective, but our sloppy intuitions make it seem like we already knew the answer. The obviousness of good advice. I have been lucky enough to receive a lot of excellent advice. This advice helped me launch a business, growing it into a multi-person team, and even writing a best-selling book. Little of that advice was counterintuitive. Instead, it generally crystallized something that had felt like a possibility, but only stood out once it was articulated by someone who knew more than I did. One example occurred when I was preparing to do the promotion for my book, Ultra Learning. I'd already spent nearly a decade working through the ideas and multiple years going through the process of actually writing it. Now the dreaded phase of marketing was beginning and I wasn't quite sure how to approach it. I remember asking my friend James Clear, author of the enormously successful Atomic Habits, to tell me what he did. He told me that he had been on over 200 podcasts in the first six months of the book's launch, including around 80 that were released in the first week the book went out. Whoa. (laughs) By the standard of counterintuitiveness, the idea that going on lots of podcasts to promote a book was pretty uninformative. I already knew that. But had I not received the advice, I probably would have thought going on a dozen or so podcasts was enough. The advice seemed obvious in retrospect, but I would have been wrong had I not heard it. There are no secrets, but you also don't already know the answer. When I interact with people, I find they often fall into two camps when it comes to advice. The first group believes in secrets. They think that there are special, unheard of methods and ideas that will cause you to lose weight, earn money, or become successful. The second group believes that you already know what you need to do to succeed. So failure to get ahead in this case is either because of a lack of willpower, motivation, or talent. I'd like to argue that both groups are wrong. There are genuinely useful advice and information that people don't possess. And this lack of knowledge, much more so than motivation or willpower, is what keeps them from succeeding in many pursuits. Yet, if you hear obvious advice, it doesn't sound like a great secret. It sounds like the same stuff everybody already knows. Knowledge typically isn't about discovering secrets. Instead, it's about figuring out which boring yet plausible account of how things work is actually right. 